Biden meets Michael D. Higgins in Dublin. The U.S. President Joe Biden has said it is a pleasure to be back as he met the Irish President Michael D. Higgins in Dublin. He will spend most of Thursday in the company of leading Irish politicians. He started his working day with a visit to Eris and Uachtarain, the home of the Irish President in Phoenix Park. President Biden inspected a military guard of honor and signed the visitor's book. He also planted an oak tree and rang the bell of peace. The bell was erected in 2008 to commemorate the 10th anniversary of the Good Friday Agreement. After ringing the bell, President Biden gave it another ring, saying, one more for peace. He said he was feeling great and that he had learned a lot from the president. President Higgins then gave President Biden a quick tour of the grounds around his official residence and introduced him to one of his dogs. President Biden is now meeting with Tawasich, Irish Prime Minister, Leo Varadkar at nearby Farmley House. Earlier, Mr. Biden said he had quoted an Irish proverb, in his message in the visitor's book Your feet will bring you where your heart is, adding that it was an honor to return. He made a reference to returning to the home of his ancestors, pledging to recommit to peace, equity and dignity. Mr. Biden added, I'm not going home. Isn't this an incredible place, all you American reporters, it's just like the White House, right? A delegation attending the event includes Tenaste, Irish Deputy Prime Minister, Michael Martin, U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken and former Irish football star Paul McGrath. President Biden's visit to Ireland will continue with set-piece engagements, including an address to the Irish Parliament. His visit to the Republic of Ireland encompasses both the personal and the political. On Wednesday evening it was all about the personal. President Biden visited both Dundalk and his ancestral roots in the town of Carlingford in County Louth. Mr. Biden met distant relatives in the Cooley Peninsula, where crowds lined the quayside as the presidential motorcade arrived. Later in Dundalk, there were shouts of welcome home, Joe when Mr. Biden arrived to address an audience at the town's Windsor Bar. There he said Irish people were the only people in the world in my view who are actually nostalgic about the future. A major security operation is also underway in the Republic of Ireland's capital, with a number of city center roads closed. Polythene wraps have also been placed around bins along the route the U.S. president will take. Phoenix Park has been shut until 1700 hours local time on Thursday, with pavements near Dublin Castle shut for pedestrians until midnight on Friday. In contrast to his rain-soaked arrival on Wednesday, Mr. Biden looks set to see a much brighter day in Dublin with temperatures around 12 C, 54 F. After his meeting with the Irish president, President Biden traveled the short distance to Farmley House where he is having a bilateral with the Tawasich, Irish Prime Minister, Leo Varadkar. Mr. Biden will then be given a sample of Gaelic sports with a demonstration by young players before traveling to Leinster House to address both houses of the Wariactas, Parliament, the Dale and the Sinead, Senate. His speech is expected to emphasize both his pride in his Irish roots and American support for the Good Friday Agreement, which is 25 years old this week. Former Irish President Mary McAleese, former Tawasich Bertie Ahern and some Stormont party leaders are among those expected to attend. Marie Heaney, the widow of the late poet Seamus Heaney, will be a special guest of the U.S. President, Irish national broadcaster RT reports. He was most anxious that she would be present as part of his delegation because we know he is absolutely besotted by the work of Seamus Heaney and has quoted him extensively, seen Cam Harrell, Speaker, Sean O'Fearghal said. After his speech, President Biden will be the evening guest of honor at a state function in Dublin Castle, the former seat of British power in Ireland. Despite the rain, people lined the streets of Carlingford to welcome the U.S. president back to Ireland among them, distant relatives. Eamon Thornton celebrates Mr. Biden's Irish ancestry with From Whitestown, County Louth to the White House, Washington, emblazoned on the back of his white van. His Irishness has stood to him, he's a down-to-earth man, he told BBC's Good Morning Ulster program. Mr. Thornton met his relative, who he calls a local, during one of his last visits. When he was here the last time, he just came in and welcomed everyone, very emotional having visited the grave of his great-great-grandparents. For him to be at the graveyard touching the headstone of his relations, who would ever have thought that would happen to a local? Mr. Thornton is convinced his relative is keen for another four years at the White House. His age is against him, but he has the Irish spirit in him and that's as good as seven points on the football field. On Wednesday, the U.S. president met political leaders in Northern Ireland at the new Ulster University Belfast campus. He called for politicians to restore the power-sharing government at Stormont, which collapsed more than a year ago.
He praised politicians for their unity after the attempted murder of one of Northern Ireland's top detectives in February. John Caldwell was shot several times by two gunmen in Omagh, County Tyrone. On Friday, the U.S. president is expected to travel to County Mayo where he will again explore his Irish ancestry. Another great-great-grandfather Edward Blewett also left Ireland around the time of the famine. While in the county the president, who is a Catholic, is also expected to visit Shrine at Knock and to make an outdoor speech to people in Ballina before he ends his four-day visit to the island. A U.S. genealogist who researched Mr. Biden's lineage had estimated he is roughly five-eighths Irish. His great-great-grandfather Owen Finnegan left there for America in the late 1840s. Declan Harvey and Tara Mills explore the text of the Good Friday Agreement, the deal which heralded the end of the Troubles in Northern Ireland. They look at what the agreement actually said and hear from some of the people who helped get the deal across the line.